I wanted to have an intergenerational program at uh, Barra College with my children's center so that the children could have a broader view of um, the world around them. I did not have a model program when I started my intergenerational program. I just knew what I wanted to do and wasn't sure how it was going to work, but thought you start small and you work on it and you evaluate and you go from there. I started with one program and as that progressed and grew, I felt a need to expand it to the frail seniors and from that I have expanded to another set of frail seniors so it just keeps mushrooming and uh, growing. I think one of the main reasons that I am so fond of making sure this intergenerational program continues and grows is my sense of uh, fondness for my grandparents. Um, they came for a visit uh, when I was three years old and Unfortunately, my grandfather passed away, but my grandmother uh, never um, went back east. She stayed and lived with us, and so for 12 years of my life, um, I had the wonderful experience of living with a senior citizen, and obviously someone I loved and someone who loved me. And I, it was important to me um, that I was able to continue my fondness for being around seniors. Uh, for a year and a half, I was my father's companion uh, in his final year and a half. And um, when he passed away, it was a hole. I, I had a, a big hole in my heart, in my life. You can never replace, you know, your father or your mother or anybody you love. But uh, at least working with the seniors, I feel that I'm helping someone out there cope with a loss or uh, filling a void in a senior's life. The Barra College Children's Center's intergenerational program began with active seniors from the local community coming to Barra for interaction, puzzles, games, songs, and then a luncheon. The, the children will come and introduce themselves uh, to us as we enter into their uh, area of activity and sit at the tables where they will do their various paper mache and putty and uh, general activities in which they are involved, which they are very anxious for us to work with them. There are many, many reasons we need them. Uh, one is to uh, bridge the gap between the generations. Mostly for me, though, I think it's to give the senior citizens a, a sense of belonging somewhere, a reason to get up in the morning, something to look forward to, and a place they can pass along their knowledge, which is being lost, on to the younger children. And I like the environment. I see how, how uh, well, first of all, how clean it is. Second of all, how loving the teachers are and how responsive the children are. And uh, I like to get in and get my hands dirty with them, with the clay and with the silly putty and, and just observing them and kind of working along with them and enjoying their company. One of the things that the children do get out of this is when we do have the luncheons, they participate fully in the preparation for these luncheons. They do things like going to the pumpkin farm, buying the pumpkin, bringing it back, and turning it into a pumpkin pie. And then they make the placemats and all the centerpieces, and they just actively participate in the whole preparation, which I know they take something from there. I feel that uh, uh, maybe in some way we can touch them as not as strangers, but as people, people in a a group which is other than just children and teachers. We are people who have lived a long life and with great uh, uh, experiences and maybe they can pick up some feeling that growing older is not such a bad idea. 
Well, I think from the senior's point of view, uh, they get to see little people, and they're always amazed at how much these little ones are learning and how much they can absorb at such an early age. Maybe they don't get to see little kids because their families are spread out, or maybe they don't have grandchildren. And uh, they really enjoy getting together with the, the little ones. I think the intergenerational program really enhances the quality of child care we can provide for the children of the students and faculty and staff. Secondly, it is a wonderful way for Barra to reach out to the community by being involved with the different uh, senior citizen groups and for us to really be an everyday part. And third, um, for our college students, I think it's an excellent opportunity for them who maybe don't have grandparents or aren't used to having grandparents um, around. They are past the peer pressure. They are past the competition. They have a wisdom that is gained only through age. They have reached a higher level of self-actualization. They also accept people simply on what they are. I think that um, the very young and the older, or older persons, it's an automatic bonding and link to them. And I think that it, it allows children to, to be themselves. It allows adults to be themselves. Um, and I think it goes nowhere but forward. And then when we're through with the general uh, academic type of uh, activity, they'll take us by the hand and lead us into the dining room. There we have, we will look for our names on the little uh, place cards and they will very happily and gleefully join us and have a good lunch together. Being new at Barra, my first experience with the intergenerational program was the Thanksgiving luncheon. And that was after coming out of a very stressful morning in the office, that was very relaxing to come in and watch the interaction between the children, their parents, students, and the older Americans that were there. The children and the older adults were just having a great time. And I think the people in the middle of that spectrum were the ones that were truly brought back to reality in a sense. I see the impact of the intergenerational programs as something that can have a nationwide effect if they get well established in a number of uh, institutions, not just colleges, but perhaps churches, um, perhaps some of the social service agencies in that there are, the, this population is aging. More and more seniors are finding themselves at home alone, where they don't have contact with their families, they don't have uh, contact with their neighbors. And I think that working with these children will keep them healthier, longer. I think it could even have an impact on the economics of the country in that healthy, lively seniors will not experience the depression and I think they won't have as many needs for other services. At the luncheons we bring together six generations and one thing that's really special for me is that I'm part of a three generation family because I'm there, my mother is there, and my grandmother is there. So it's very special to see that. It's like going downtown for a day at the theater for these people. They thoroughly enjoy it, and it's a reason for living, for getting up in the morning and, oh, we're going to Barra today to see the children. Oh, it's very meaningful. I mean, to get old is not easy. And to know that you have some place to go is very important. So it is a quintessentially beautiful program that develops and works with the generations together and really all of the generations are enriched by this. Here we are, a college of about 750 students, a small national liberal arts college that then has 300 or more people involved with its children's center. It's very unusual. It's a model that uh, is being copied in, uh, in our area, will be copied, et cetera, and will enrich the various institutions, whether those institutions are 
academic or whether they are business or industry because the model can be taken in a variety of ways. So that it's a way that our institution can reach out and join with other institutions that is enriching. It's like the little droplet of water that goes down into the water that is completely flat and all of these wonderful rings grow out of it. And the center in that way uh, has really made a tremendous impact. I've made friends with uh, quite a few of the people here and I appreciate their helping here and I can see the goodness coming from them to us and from us to them. And it's just a rewarding experience all the way around. Sometimes in the summer, the kids come down to the beach and join us for our waffle breakfast, which we have right down at Lake Forest Beach. Well, I'm the waffle king of the seniors. We have them at the beach. I have about five irons going at the same time, and they just, they just love it. And I look forward to their squeals of, this is great business. It makes me feel good. We did perform there in the theater. We, the Bows and Bells, who are the singing group from the seniors, and we put on a show, and it was on TV. An intergenerational program that once a month matches seniors with children to the obvious joy of both. <laughs> It's a great uh, thrill for us to do this and uh, to experience being on TV in the hams most of us are. And, uh, but we did enjoy that program and uh, we were very thankful that we had an opportunity to be on TV because uh, I heard many, many fine comments about that the next day. Not only do we go over to the um, daycare center, but sometimes the children come to the senior center. It isn't so much what I get out of it, it's what I feel I should put into it. I've lived on this earth over 80 years, and I feel that there's a need for leadership if I can supply it in some manner. And I do feel that youth and children will look up and expect people around them to act as, as people. And we feel that we do about just that. As, as a parent, as I would want to have my child be uh, treated. I think already I've seen the impact, certainly in my own son, but in the other children as well, in, in giving them a sense of, of themselves and being proud of themselves, but also a sensitivity to others that um, are not their own age or from their own backgrounds as well. And I think that those kinds of qualities, and those kinds of values certainly are, are important to my husband and I in instilling in our son, but in instilling in all of our children. They, they will learn to read and write eventually, but learning that sensitivity and that, um, that, that gentleness uh, that they, they naturally come by into life and have that responded to, I think, just enhances their self-esteem and makes them much stronger better people. What they are getting out of it is older people at play. That older people are not just sitting in the corner, sniveling and coughing and being sick, and they are alive, alert, and they like to see them romping around and being happy. It's a family of fun. After working with these programs for a year, I felt a need to address the frail seniors, and I thought that my children were quite capable of handling being around frail seniors. And in my heart, they're the ones that need the extra TLC. I'll be going to the park. <laughs> no, we're not going to the park. We're going to go take food to sick people. So I uh, called around and was able to set up a uh, meal on wheels delivery twice a month with the uh, senior citizens of the Libertyville 
area. Spinach, noodles, and chicken. Doesn't that look good? You say good morning. Look at all the containers they have. Staff, we can start taking the children back into the Got it? Okay, let's move. They give the older adults uh, an opportunity to be around younger children. Many of our recipients do live alone and don't have families and are very isolated. And uh, so by Kathy and her youngsters delivering the meals, it gives an opportunity for some socialization for the older adults. And when we do Meals on Wheels, that's pretty unique because these seniors are at home, they can't cook their own food, and these children show up and it brightens their whole day. And that's great to see. They are very excited about it. I have contact with many of our recipients on a regular basis, and when I talk with them, they're always talking about, you know, when is Kathy coming back, and when will the children be there? They look forward to having her come, and they would like to see her more often. When we deliver Meals on Wheels, and we go, we do the same route, and we go to the same homes, and they know, they wait for us. They know that the Children's Center is coming, and they might have stuff out for us to look at or something, as opposed to another person coming by him or herself to deliver the food. They're in, they're out, but we come and we bring the children in and we talk to them, and so they look forward to us coming. Yes, you are super. Thank you. Bye bye. When the children come to me, we enjoy each other because they see that all old people aren't mad and sad and sick all the time and I'm glad to see them and we just enjoy each other. Oh, we've got a big group today. Hello! <laughs> well, when the whole group comes together, there's a kind of excitement among them because they're coming for a visit and you can feel this as they come through the door. You fix up a little, you comb your hair, and you're near the door waiting for somebody to come. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. They may not understand that there's a vitality in life at every age. So that you need, and, and older people also need that aliveness from the young. We don't want to live in a, a world divided up in the little boxes and we're just with our own age and kind. We need this exchange to feel alive. Yeah, Feedback from recipients of the home delivered meals uh, reconfirms how important it is that um, we do a program such as this intergenerational programming. If this is brought out through other colleges, which I definitely think it should be, um, companies and things like that, I think that'll get a whole generation of children who are more caring, more sensitive, and want to volunteer more and get out there with the senior citizens and work with them. After doing Meal on Wheels and seeing how important it was to a spark up the lives of frail seniors. I was fortunate enough to meet a uh, director of activities at Covenant Village and of Northbrook again and in their health care section. We now go over once a month for a music therapy sing-along and uh, that is just an incredible experience to watch. Intergenerational programs have been one of the goals that we have wanted to do on our campus because we see the value of the youth and the excitement and the, just the beauty of little children uh, linked together with senior citizens and what senior citizens can offer them. And we just found when we put them together, the mix was great and the magic took place and the, the rest of the program has really been history since then. The children are bringing wonderful memories back to the residents the way their eyes light up when they see a child, the smile, they'll say, isn't that a beautiful child? Or to see a little hand um, 
plump and soft, clasped in the hand of a, of a well-worn, weathered hand, and to just see the chemistry of a child who looks up to an adult, a senior citizen, a grandpa, a grandma, and that senior citizen holding on to that little hand. And uh, it's just amazing. The intergenerational program is a way of linking the past to the present. And for a senior citizen, life can become very one-dimensional. You see the same aged people every day, except for the staff. Your life runs from one day into the next. A child to a senior citizen is a window to the world. It brings them into their life. So we feel that it's, it's life the way it should be. It's bringing everybody together and uh, everybody benefits from it. We as the staff see the difference in our residents after the children have come. Uh, the kids do songs where there's actions. Well, you know, all of a sudden, a resident has a reason to lift his arms, to move his feet, to clap his hands. They may not do it in exercise in the morning, but they do it with the kids. What did you do? We did the the benefits to the staff I see in the sense that they get excited about bringing the residents to the program. They see that it brightens their day, it brightens their life, and so the staff really loves it when the children come. And it's cute because you see them kind of sneak into the room and see what's going on. When we first began, we didn't have a lot of male employees, and now um, after the program has been you know, going on for four years, our enrollment in terms of employees among the males have increased incredibly and they have gotten more motivated and the seniors motivate the guys here that work. So it's, it's been very positive for all of us, not only for the females, but also for the males. I would certainly recommend this program. It's very good from the elementary level, from the pre preschool children to the college level. Let's, let's take the whole gamut. Uh, because there's an exchange of ideas, and the different levels here, they, they realize that we're community, we're here, we love you, you love us, and that's the name of the game. It's love in this world, and we love one another. No more wars, no more misunderstandings, and a good good family relationship is, is there and we want to be family with you and you with us. The Children's Center and the Intergenerational Program enhances Barra College in, in ways beyond my own expectations but in ways that other places I think could certainly emulate from and personally as well as both a parent and an employee of Barra. Um, to me it just makes my world a much happier place as well. I think that um, the program that has been developed here at Barra College is really on the cutting edge of intergenerational programming. I think that the intergenerational program is one of the, the crucial elements to defining what the Barra College community is here. I think without the intergenerational program, the college community would, would be empty in, in many ways. And, and when I'm out on the road recruiting students, I can talk about our daycare center with excitement and explain the fact that it is more than just daycare. Learning goes on in the center, and we have this intergenerational program that develops community. That's a key cell point for the college. It's a center that has uh, a great deal of, of power, of richness, the developmental model, the community connection, all of these things are important for all of our institutions and I'm sure that uh, you'll see more and more of these in the days to come. I'm just happy that Barra has such a wonderful one now. If you're interested in starting an intergenerational program, uh, obviously there are many different avenues you can take. You can be very elaborate, as uh, my interaction with the Lake Forest, Lake Bluff seniors is, or you can be low-key, like my interaction with the Meal on Wheels program or the Covenant Village Nursing Home. You can do whatever you want. You, you choose the kind of program you want, and then, uh, depending on your funding. And if you don't have funding, then there are lots of ways you can obtain funding and not be afraid to go get it. And you, you only take out what you put in.
There is no free lunch. You must participate. If you don't participate, don't expect participation. Give, it'll be a sermon, it'll be given to you and full. No question about it.